The Downtown Rams podcast is brought to you today by Draft. Looking for the best fantasy sports site on the planet? Sign up with Draft today. For a limited time only, our listeners will receive $3 matching their first deposit of at least $10. Use promo code DTR or visit draft.com slash DTR to sign up now. Draft, fantasy for the people. Now enjoy the show. Caught by Brandon Cooks. Shoot your arrows. Cooper Cup walks it out of the air and gives the Rams the lead. Robert Wood, touchdown. L.A. Goff goes crashing into the end zone. Aaron Donald almost beat the football there. Corey Littleton, have yourself a day. Picked off. Marcus Peters. Coming off the edge. And Ryan will be wrapped up by Clay Matthews. Everett in stride. Wow. Franklin Myers gets his hand down there. Little got a hand on it. Did he pick it? He did! Racing down the sideline is a key to lead. Gurley for MVP! Touchdown LA! Picked off by John Johnson. Well, Dante Fowler, who is able to get to free. Greg Zerline sends the Ram to the Super Bowl! LA will play for the Lombardi! Welcome back, guys, to another Downtown Rams podcast, but it is actually the start of draft season. It's 2020. I'm your host, Jake Ellenbogen. Joining me, as always, is Alexis Kraft. And with the first draft season podcast of the year, of the new year, might I add, we have two great prospects that we are, we're really happy to interview. We're going to continue doing this. We'll talk some off-season stuff um, you know, as we you know move forward this off-season um, but we did want to dive right into draft season because it's officially draft season if you're a Rams fan. Um, for those of you who like what you hear, be sure to subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, your guests that you will be getting on this show. We have Kendall Futrell from Eastern Carolina, the edge rusher, the very talented edge rusher, might I add. And on top of that, we have Kalijah Lipscomb from Vanderbilt, the wide receiver. It's It was a lot of fun. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. And here are the two guys. And this is the podcast. All right, joining us on the Downtown Rams podcast, our first guest of the 2020 draft season, we have Kendall Futrell, defensive end, East Carolina. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. Doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. We're just so excited to get to talk to you, and I'll just kick this thing right off. Um, just to begin, we just kind of want to know, um, you know, your story of how you started playing football. Um. Uh... I started off as a as a really young kid. All my all my brothers played. Well, I had one brother. My brother played. All my friends played. My cousins. We always just used to go to the backyard and just just throw the ball around and just do like little stuff like that. And it just came like a. It went from a hobby to something I really loved doing and something I wanted to do for the rest of my life or as long as I could. So that's kind of how that happened. Yeah, of course. You know, everyone starts somewhere, and uh, you know, backyard football is definitely uh, something that I think a lot of people would uh, take sauce in knowing. But um, with that being said, I do want to know. Uh, we ask everybody that comes on uh, this question: Who was your favorite football player growing up, or, or you know, somebody that you really uh, were inspired by uh, to enter the league someday? Um, growing up, it was definitely Reggie Bush because I remember I used to play running back like when I was a little kid. So I always wanted to, like, be a running back. And I used to have the video game. I think it was, like, um, NCAA 2006, maybe. It was a long time ago. But I definitely liked <laughs> Reggie Bush growing up because he, he was, like, a really good player. And I wanted to be, like, a running back like him. So he was definitely my favorite player. Yeah, he was a really fun player to watch for sure. And, you know, you had a really successful high school career, and then it came time for you to obviously play in college, and you ended up um, playing for East Carolina. What was the main uh, factor for you in choosing to play for them? Um, you know, I'm from Greenville, North Carolina. That's where ECU is. So it was kind of like just playing in my, my own hometown and playing in my backyard. So that was always something I wanted to do as a little kid. And when it was time to choose, I just chose to stay home and just stay at ECU because I felt like that was the best choice for me. Yeah, that must have been really cool. Um, you know, going back to the whole backyard uh, comment that you had, it's it's funny how that goes together. And, of course, uh, 
if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that um, CJ uh, 2K went there as well. So, uh, you know, you talk about the, the, you know, the great running backs. You brought up Reggie Bush. CJ 2K went to East Carolina, I believe. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, obviously you're you're far from playing running back, although you probably could do it. Maybe <laughs> that'll be something that, uh, you know, teams ask you whether or not you'd be interested in doing at the goal line, you know, maybe set aside a package for you. Um, but, you know, with that being said, I just want to know, you know, what was your favorite memory in playing college football at East Carolina? Man, there's so many of them, but I would say probably the main thing was just being with my teammates every day, like in the locker room, just making jokes and just doing like, just like stupid stuff. It's fun, like just to be around those guys and just like, just dance and laugh and that that kind of stuff. So I would definitely say just being around my teammates every day. Yeah, for sure. I can imagine that's always a really special experience to kind of go through that journey together and get to, you know, be with each other almost every day, um, you know, playing football. I'm sure that's awesome. But, you know, you you played with a lot of really talented guys, but you also went up against a lot of talented guys in college. So who was the toughest guy that you had to match up against or play against during your time playing college football? Oh, there was so many of them. I got asked that question the other day, matter of fact. Um one guy, uh, Daryl Henderson, he's on the Rams now, I think, matter of fact. The running back from Memphis. Mm-hmm. I played against him. Yes, my ju- yeah, I played against him my junior year. He was really good. I think he had like 200 yards against us. He was really fast, really. He's a really good player. It was hard to stop him. Yeah, I like that you bring that up. Uh, you know, Daryl's actually somebody I ranked as the number one running back coming out of college last year. Uh, just somebody, and I'm sure it was hard to stop him and uh, – you know, his his counterpart, uh Tony Pollard as yeah, well, Tony who Pollard actually saw it at the too. senior bowl. Um uh-huh. he is he is impressive. You know, those two are really impressive in general and it looks like Memphis is slowly but surely kind of building uh, a potential powerhouse down the road. Um you know, with that being said, you know, I do want to know, you know, we always ask players this and you know, we always get different answers and things, but I do want to know, you know, what would you say mm-hmm. is uh, you know, your biggest strength uh as a player? Oh, my biggest strengths, I would say my motor because I feel like I play harder than anybody else. I kind of pride myself on that, just playing hard and just play, out playing anybody I go against, like outworking them. So I would definitely say my motor and um, my speed and explosion off the edge. Yeah, definitely something that I would agree with. You know, watching, you know, your tape, Jake and I both were like, man, this guy is explosive. It's something that we were really impressed by um, for sure. And and what is something, you know, that you are looking to improve on uh, with your game? Um, A lot of technique stuff. I got a lot of work to go as far as that. Um, Like working my hands on pass rush in the run game as well. Um, I know I have to drop in the coverage some too with my size. So just like stuff like that, a lot of technique work, things like that. Yeah. And we, this is always a fun question to ask any pass rusher that comes on here. Who is a quarterback that you want to sack the most in the NFL? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I got to go for the best though. I love watching Lamar Jackson. So he's like my favorite quarterback in the league now, but I want to go against him and I want to sack him. So that would be that would be a great one to start off with. Yeah, for sure. That's a great answer. You know, that's a guy that, that not many people get the opportunity to sack just because he's so elusive. So I'm um, sure that that would be pretty awesome to uh, to lay a sack on him. But, you know, we are a Rams podcast, so we were just curious. You know, you're a defensive guy. Um, what are your thoughts on the Rams, you know, defense, especially guys like Dante Fowler and uh, Aaron Donald? I love watching the Rams play. Um, I watch them a lot especially last year. I haven't really gotten to check them out a ton this year, but last year I watched them a lot, especially because they were in the Super Bowl and stuff, and I like the way their defense plays. Dante Fowler is a a great player. I remember watching him all the way back at Florida. So uh, I just love watching their defense play. You know, they got some, some great players on that team. Yeah, no, I can I can definitely uh, vouch for you there. You are correct on that one. They uh, their defense is uh, really peaking at the right time, and they, you know, ever since they got Jalen Ramsey, it seems like that really just took them to another level. Um, I want to ask yeah. you kind of an interesting question here because I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you what you know defense 
uh, you can actually play in because I do believe that you're fairly scheme versatile. I think that they could use you as a stand up linebacker, uh, rushing the passer. And I, I think you could definitely, you know, put your hand in the dirt and rush as a, a four, three defensive end. Uh, but what do you say prefer, um, as a, uh, as a pass rusher? Do you, do you want to stick your hand in the dirt? Do you want to be a stand up rusher? Um, like, you know, what kind of role would you prefer? Um, it doesn't even really matter to me because I've done both here at ECU. I was stand up last year, and my freshman, these uh, sophomore year and senior year, I was handed the dirt. So um, I'm pretty successful with doing both. But I do kind of like the the stand up a little more. Not necessarily like a, a inside linebacker, but like the outside linebacker that can rush off the edge and drop into coverage. Sometimes I, I kind of like that. But I also like playing with my hand in the dirt, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and, and, you know, just to kind of wrap this up here, you know, we just got to ask, you know, who is Kendall Futrell as a person and who is he as a player? As a person, um, pretty laid back, too. Uh, I like to be around friends and family, like to laugh a lot, um, joke, dance, smile, just anything like that. So, and uh, as a player, once I once I cross the, the lines as a player, I kind of change into um, – a hard worker, like hard nose, tough, somebody like that to to where they they can get the job done as far as football goes and and be able to execute. Hey, it's a it's a great answer, and uh, you know we really appreciate you coming on. It's been exciting talking to you. It's even more exciting, you know, getting a chance to like look at your film, and it, it's exciting thinking about the the possibilities, man. Because you know you've seen you know different players coming in the league and. Um, you had a very productive year this year, uh, you know, at, in college over 11 sacks. And, um, you know, I think big things are coming for you. We, we've talked to a few pass rushers from the previous draft. Uh, one, just to name one, Max Crosby, uh, you know, he came on here and he's on the Raiders right now and he's making an impact. I think you could do the same. So, you know, really appreciate you coming on and, uh, you know, we'll be fans for life. We'll be rooting for you, following you and, uh, you know, good luck with everything, man. Man, thank y'all for having me. I didn't even know I was the first first dude to do it, so <laughs> that adds a little something special to it. But thank y'all for having me, though, for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you so much. We're excited to see, uh, you know, what the future holds for you. Thank you. All right, take take care, man, and uh, let's keep in touch. Sounds good. All right, joining us on the Downtown Rams podcast, we have Kalijah Lipscomb from Vanderbilt, wide receiver. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. Man, I'm good, man. I'm, uh, thank, uh, thank you guys for having me on. Just, you know, looking forward lo- looking forward to this process and getting things going. Yeah, of course. We're really excited to talk to you. And, and just to start this thing off, I just kind of want to hear a little bit about how you got into the game of football. Um, so, originally... Uh, <laughs> My mom, my mom made me play football, uh, park ball when I was four. Um, there was a park right down the street from my grandmother's house where we lived. So um, that's where, you know, that's where she. I was a couch potato. Um, she she made me get get active and get and get going, um, and that continued until about um, until I was maybe like twelve, and I actually quit. I quit tackle football and played only a uh, flag until I got to high school. And you know, here we are today. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. And, you know, of course, as as we know, I mean, you know, there's always kind of somebody, you know, if you play a sport or, or, you know, you're a musician or what have you, there's always somebody you kind of look up to. Who was that uh, growing up? Like, who was your favorite player um, necessarily that, you know, might have sparked your interest in, in going and eventually playing in the NFL? Um. Growing up, growing up, uh, I mean... I, Huh. When I really, I like, so I really didn't start watching football like intently and really like appreciating players until I got maybe to like middle school. And the first player that um, I really watched was Reggie Bush and being at USC. I think he came, he was drafted to the Saints, you know, where I'm from my, um, that my, my fifth or sixth grade year. So, um, you know, everybody, remember everybody being excited about Reggie getting drafted. And stuff. So I went, you know, I used to watch his highlights and stuff. And he was always the guy 
that was like, man, dude, this dude's like this dude's crazy on the football field. And then, you know, uh, fast forward a few years, my dad actually won. My dad's a barber. He wound up cutting Reggie Bush's hair uh, for some time while he was with the Saints and also with the Dolphins. So, um, you know, he 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 was like I would say he's probably the first guy that I was like, like I won't be like Reggie Bush or something like that. You know. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, he he was really a fun player to watch, um, and and we've had guys you know you say that they looked up to him as well, and he's certainly a popular player for sure. But you know, when it came time to play in college, you ended up going to Vanderbilt. What was the uh, main factor for you in choosing them? Um, honestly, my parent, my my parents, my my dad was real big. My dad was real big on you know the academic aspect of it. Um. You know, when Coach Mason and Coach Cortez Hankton came and recruited me, they they sold me on, you know, uh, on what they were trying to do at Vanity. They sold me on the, the, I guess, the role that I could have in that process, even if it was just at the fundamental level. And then um, they sold me on what um, what Vandy, as far as me going there and playing potentially early, could do for myself. Having you know, and me me being a receiver, they you know of course Jordan Matthews went there and had success and was able to go to the NFL. Uh, Earl Bennett went there and as just receivers wise, but you know then you got Jay Cutler and you know and a, and, and a bunch of guys since them, uh, and they were like, man, they basically said, you know, we are we are in the SEC, uh, we are kind of the underdogs in the SEC, but we can come here and, and and you can play and you can do and you can make plays and do big things. And also, you can still go. You can. There's a way to make it out of Vandy. Vandy's just not going to college and playing. You can go to the NFL also. Yeah, I like that you said that. One guy that always you know stands out for me, you know, being a Rams podcast and all, is uh, Zach Stacy. Um, loved watching him at Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. and then you know the Rams ended up packaging a bunch of picks and trade up the fifth round and got him. And you know he was really good for the Rams for the short time he was with them before you know Gurley came into the picture. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I, I've definitely uh, watched some Vandy football, so I know what you're talking about um, for sure. But, a- um, you know, I just want to ask you, though, you know, your favorite memory, whether it be a play or a game that really stands out to you, um, you know, while you were at Vanderbilt. Okay. Um, so, really, too, excuse me. Really, and truly, um, the answer is different depending on if it's a player or a game. Uh, my favorite, the the play that's my single, the single play that stands out to me the most, uh, was you know my junior year we played Tennessee State. Um, it was like a close game going into the fourth quarter, and people were worried because if we, you know, if Vandy Vandy lost to Tennessee State, that could mean trouble for Coach Mason's job. It was it was a lot going on. People, were, a lot of whispers and stuff, as well as you know, it's a. The, the Tennessee State is in the, in the city of Nashville, so you know um, it was kind of like bragging rights over the city almost. And uh, we were going; it was a tight game. Uh, into the like six minutes left in the fourth quarter, and uh, Kyle Shermer threw me a, threw me a go on the left side, jumped up, caught it, stayed on my feet, and then ran to the end zone. It wound up being the you know the the go ahead score to win the game. Um, and it was kind of that was big for me because early in that season. I had um, I I dropped a pass against Notre Dame um, that that probably would allow us to go to 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 score and go go up against Notre Dame, who I think was ranked three in the country at that time, or something like that. They were ranked uh, real high, so that was you know it was kind of like a redemption moment for me. That was big, but uh, the single game that I think stands out the most for me was um, also last year, well my junior year um, against Tennessee. At home was the last game of the year. Of course, it's a rivalry game for us, and um, I broke my left. I broke my left hand in the first quarter of the game, and uh, but I played. I played through it. Um, wound up catching like eight more balls. Caught a one hander in my, in, in my good hand. It was it like it was a it was a pretty good game because not only did we win at home against Tennessee, it also made us bowl eligible. You know, for for uh, two out of three years that I've been there. And it also, um, you know, it was like kind of like a tough moment that I could hang my hat on. 
Yeah, definitely. Those are really great answers. I really like that. Um, you know, you played against a lot of really, really tough opponents um, while you were at Vanderbilt. But if you had to pick, you know, one or two guys that you went up against uh, in college, who would you say um, were the toughest guys you went up against? Ooh, I get asked this question a lot. I don't, and honestly, um, I always, I kind of, I'm biased, but I always say like the, the best corner I ever went against in college was my own teammate, Jawan Williams. Play for the Patriots now. Uh, got drafted last year, but as far as other other guys go, um, I think the dude uh, DeAndre Baker from Georgia was good. He was straight. He was, uh, you know, he was solid, fast. You know, wasn't afraid to tackle. Um, you know, and and was was pretty and, and fit well in, in, in their scheme and what they did. Um, and this year, a guy that was like, you know, had a has a lot of hype and rightfully so, honestly, in my opinion. Derek Stingley from LSU. He's uh, I think I think he's gonna be great. He's already he's like he's already awesome. I think he's gonna be like, you know, the face of college football in a few years. Honestly, dude is very talented. Um, and I'm actually, I'm looking forward to seeing you know how he progresses and where his career goes. Yeah, he is he is definitely a talent. <clears throat> you know, I I think you're obviously that that conference is littered with them. Um, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> as you well know. Uh, with that being said, you know, kind of looking more at you and, and your game, what would you say is your biggest strength? My biggest strength, um, as far as football goes, huh? um, I think like I would say overall, I think I'm a pretty tough competitor. I think, and I think that, uh, you know, I think that goes into different areas for me. I think, you know, that uh, that allows me to not allows, but, you know, that goes into, like, the idea that I'm pretty good at contested catches. Uh, you know, I, I think I do a a pretty good job of finding the end zone normally, um, you know, throughout my career. Um, to say I'm only six foot, you know, six foot one on a very good day, um, you know, I caught a lot of red zone touchdowns. Um, you know, I'm not afraid to go across the middle. Uh, and also, I, I think I'm a pretty smart football player. I, I've grown in my football intelligence and, and being able to, to do different things on the football field as well as routes. Uh, I think I think I've my routes in my career have gotten sharper, and I can you know at Vandy we we ran a bunch of different schemes. So you know not only do I know different offenses, but I I've, I'm versatile as far as running running almost every route in the route tree. Yeah, definitely. I definitely would agree with that. And, um, you know, just as something, you know, as the draft approaches, um, do you have anything that you're looking to improve on or any goals that you set for yourself uh, to work on? Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, I really want to improve in every every area. Um, I think, you know, I think this is the time where where guys um, tend to show that they've made improvements on, you know, their biggest their biggest downfalls in their game, uh, whether it be over combine, pro day, whatever, maybe different uh, all-star games, but just showing coaches that, you know, the critiques that they have of them aren't accurate anymore. Um, and for me, I think that's just, you know, I think I want to show, and this is more of like a testing thing, but I think I want to show, you know, that I that I can run and I'm, uh, that I'm fast. Um, I, think, I think that's a big question as far as what my four is going to be. Um, but on the football field, um, I want to show that I can block and not only that I can block, but that I'm like eager to do it. Um, I want to, want to catch some deep passes cause we didn't do a whole lot of that at Vanderbilt. A lot of my stuff was, was short to intermediate. Um, and, uh, I want to show that I can run with the ball. I know I got, I got the senior bowl coming up. So, you know, uh, running with the ball after the catch is going to be a big area for me. Yeah, you know, I, I really like that. I, I think that's a very, you know, thoughtful response. And I totally understand, you know, with the 40 time and everything, everyone gets so caught up in that. But, you know, there are a lot of uh, mm-hmm. players around the league that, you know, didn't run that well in the 40 and it, it caused them to fall into some great situations. I mean, you know, you look at Jarvis Landry, he ran, I think, a 4-7 and, and Cooper Cup ran the four, you know, high four sixes and so did Keenan Allen. So it's definitely not, you know, the the end all be all. I think really what it is is during the draft, you know, everyone gets so, you know, soaked up on a 40 time and it, it's kind of almost silly because it's like, you know, if you can play, you can play. 
and, and you know, obviously you're right. route running, you create separation. It doesn't even really matter, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, time you run, because I mean, if you're creating separation, um, then, you know, you're doing your job, but I do want to ask you kind of a two part question here. Um, as a receiver, what would you say is more satisfying to do to an opposing defensive back? Would you rather moss them as you know, you know, go up and catch 50, 50 ball over them? Um, or would you rather break their ankles on a route? Um, geez. For me personally, just because of my personality, I think I'd rather catch a, I think I'd rather catch a 50, 50 ball over them because I, I think there's a lot of things that can go into you know, getting your ankles broken. Sometimes you're just moving too fast. Sometimes you slip, you know, and, and sometimes you just get got, I guess. But um, I guess I'm a little old school as far as I, I like the competitive aspect of going up for a 50-50 ball and knowing that, you know, a guy's doing everything he can to stop you and, and still catching it. Yeah, definitely, for sure. And, you know, this is just kind of a fun question. We like to ask receivers out of curiosity, but if you had to catch a touchdown pass um, from one quarterback in the NFL, who would that be? Tom Brady, for sure. For sure. Just because, I mean, generally, he's I think he's going to go out as, you know, probably the top quarterback all time, if not one of the top players in the history of the NFL. Uh, so, just I think I think being on that long list of guys that he's throwing the touchdown to would be pretty cool. Yeah, of course, and and kind of you know doubling back to um you know the the question I was asking you the you know, the moss or the um you know breaking the ankles. I want to ask you because you said moss, and I want to know who you would like to moss in the NFL if it could be any cornerback. <laughs> any cornerback in the NFL that I would like to moss. Oh, uh, I don't know, man. I, I I don't really I don't really have an answer for that one. I don't have I don't have I don't have any beef with anybody, <laughs> any corners in the NFL that I can think of. Uh, so it's not like I want to. I have like revenge set up. I want to embarrass somebody. Uh, but you know, all fun and games. I like. I don't know, man. If it was like if it was just a guy that I want to compete with, I think it'd just be like you know almost coming full circle would probably be Jawan um, with the Patriots just because, you know, that's that's my homie. And we we did it at practice for two, for three years. We we went at each other at practice for three years. So it'd be cool to, to go up, you know, and, and either make a play or he break it up just, just, just because, you know, the fact that that's my guy. Yeah, for sure. No, that's a great answer. And, you know, just to kind of close this thing out, you know, we're just curious, you know, in your own words, who is Kalijah Lipscomb as a player and who is he as a person? Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a lot. Uh, so as a person, I'm start with the person. As a person, I'm, and I, and I start with the person because I think it's a little, in my opinion, it's more important. Mm-hmm. Um, but as a person, you know, I'm a, I love my family. Uh, I'm a big brother first and foremost. I have I have I have four little siblings. Uh, um, you know, I'm a son, regular guy. Honestly, I like you know, I like reg- the regular foods everybody eat. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not not super into all the, the crazy stuff that's going on these days as far as different fashion and stuff. I mean, I like clothes and stuff, but I'm a regular guy. Um, uh, as a player, um, I'm, I think I'm tough, competitive. Um, I try to be smooth, but it doesn't always work out for me. I'm kind of goofy. <laughs> uh, and um, I think I'm a, and I, I'm a playmaker and I, and I think I'm a team player. I, I try to, you know, and I think if you, you go back and, ask my coaches at Vanderbilt, um, you know, kind of how I handled this last season. I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm like ready and willing to put my personal goals aside to, to try to help the team or try to help, you know, my, my, my teammates. So I think, I think all that role is to one is who I am. Yeah, you know, uh, Kalaji, you just seem like a really down to earth guy. Um, you know, we really look forward to you know seeing you um, at the next level. Uh, you know, we'll 
let's stay in touch and uh you know we'll be following you throughout your career man thank you so much for coming on for sure i appreciate it yeah of course you have a good one